this is Kelly from Rue Pursuit and today I've got these three purses and I'm gonna I bought them all to make them into journals so I'm just gonna kind of evaluate them today and decide which one I'm gonna start with so how do I pick out a purse to decide well first of all all three of these had some really cool designs on them and were leather and then I also was kind of looking at, okay, what would the spine be like? So if I could kind of convert this, you know, the, the back into a spine and how big it would be. So I could always cut out this part and make it smaller, I guess, uh, and give it its own spine. But I don't know, that would kind of maybe defeat the purpose. I could also use the cup, this flap actually on this one so as the spine so this would be the spine and then use some of the back that's not a bad idea and when I did that I wouldn't even need this part I could use this part for something else so that's kind of an idea I hadn't noticed before and then you'd have a pocket on the back side of it so okay that's a possibility for that one this one I think is actually probably the easiest one and may end up being the one I start with because the spine is a nice width and really has a nice, you know, kind of feel and look to it. Oh, look at the deer on the back. Isn't that amazing? Oh my goodness. Um, oh, it's got little acorns. Little, oh, it's, sorry. It even has a little mushroom down there. Do you see it? Right there under my finger it's like a log and a mushroom oh, cute okay so and then the front I don't know if this is like initials but I'm fine with it I just think it looks cool so the inside is kind of woo, kind of rough so but this is really nice this is like a leather suede kind of a situation so I don't know if it would be I would kind of want to keep the whole thing so you would have like a flap over I think on this one and then I cut apart this and you can always think about the straps and whether or not you would want to use them as like a tie also this is a really neat one I don't know if it'll fit with this it's kind of worn but that's okay okay so that's another one where you kind of do something different with it now this one I I really like the design uh the bottom is cool looking but i think it's going to be really tough to make this into a spine it's just so wide almost could be two spines maybe if the spine was like this size that would maybe work uh but i was kind of hoping to get one where i could use it as one piece so maybe for now and for my first one i'm not quite ready i would like to get some kind of a good leather cleaner and clean this one up before I attempt this one but you know I think it helps just to kind of look and see and then all the other extras I mean maybe uh, you know keep the leather for little scraps or something so we'll see I'll keep a lot of parts of that one I'm sure I you know when I first did this I thought about this one but now I'm kind of thinking maybe this one would be the easiest if I just do use this as the front cover and then this as the back cover and the spine just is this part here so that's a possibility so I'm thinking the red one is what I'm going to end up going with today so that was different I talked myself right into that first of all we're going to take the scissors to it I know I'm just going to dive right in that's how I do stuff I just dive right into it okay so I've got these very serious cut coast scissors. My husband even had them engraved. There it is. Okay, Whew. finally. Anyway, those are my cut coats, and these cut through just about anything. You will need maybe some leather cutting scissors or a very good uh, craft knife. I'm a little dangerous with craft knives. I don't know if I should have cut it on that side of that seam. I might have, should have. I just realized that but this is what we're doing <laughs> so I'm just gonna cut right along that seam oh my gosh this is crazy we're doing it 
and who knows maybe i'll find some cash inside the seams of this purse one of these purses there's got to be some right <laughs> that's my theory um i know what do i want to i can't cut too much further there okay there, there it's letting it go okay and then we'll just cut around this way Yeah, this is a super experiment, so we don't know what we're going to be left with, but that's okay. We're just playing. What's the worst that can happen? And then I wasted a dollar. That's how much this purse cost me. <laughs> In my time. No, but I think it's going to work out. I have faith. Oh, some of this lining is gross, and there's like glue or something glued on there oh oh okay be aware gross things might happen that's the possibility oh goodness i need like a biohazard bag for this thing i think okay here we go oh my goodness Whew, garbage all right let's let's just get this separated and then go from there what we're gonna do how did i cut that other end put it right okay along here okay now i gotta figure out how i can separate it i mean this little pocket is kind of nice but i don't know how in the heck i'm gonna be able to save it it's just not very practical not very practical so i'm cutting it off Who knows, maybe I'll reattach it, but now it's got to come off. Oh, I'm glad I had these scissors. This worked really, really well. Okay. Thank you to my husband for that. So now I still have this whole section of the purse, and I really want to, like, just hack it apart. Yeah, there's some... Look how gross it is in there. Ugh. Ooh, yuck. Okay. So that's disgusting. And this part, oh, it just separated. Uh -huh. Well, good thinking. But look at, let's look at the outside. Still very cool as far as an outside goes. I kind of lost the pocket there, but that's all right. Okay, so I don't know if we can detach some of this liner. It looks like it's very much attached to it. So I'm going to just, I might as well just detach it permanently. And then I'm going to go and see about cleaning it up. Because if I can't clean it up, you'll never have seen this video. Because <laughs> this has to be fixed. So I'm going to go and I'm going to figure out how I can clean it and make it and then eventually I'll cover it up too. But um, yeah, I don't want to go any further until I know that this can be cleaned. Okay, I'll be back. I feel like it's sufficiently clean. I scrubbed it really, really well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off some of this extra things here. You can just throw those out, which is good. I do wanna emphasize that this purse was not real leather. So basically, if you, I could use water and it worked fine, but leather and water are not friends. So you you could possibly damage your leather. Like the other two purses, these are both real leather. So I would not use water to clean these. There are special, uh, you know, methods 
materials, properties, oils, I think are generally what it works best. But uh, with this, I was lucky and able to just use water and some excessive amounts of soap. <laughs> and that really, really did the job. So let's just see if we can get all this off. And we just get it out of our lives, right? I just can't see, you know. I mean, it's no longer, I can't see wasting it, I guess. It's no longer functional as a purse, but it's still got, you know, some really nice properties. And yeah, so we're just gonna let that one dry. We'll just prepare that for the next phase. So we're gonna put that away. So I see this and it is, I think really great. The The pocket's in good condition. So I think that will be a wonderful uh, cover to this journal, just as it is. And then front cover, and then this will be the spine, which works out really nicely. And then we'll just have to figure out what the back is. So whether or not we use that piece or we end up using another piece is yet to be decided. But so far, now I, I think pretty much we just kind of, because this is all good. So I think we just uh, can maybe add like an applique or something in there, like something embroidered. I have lots of embroidered things, something that might go with this style. And then, uh, you know, attach that back at some point. I'll probably end up hand stitching it. I don't think that my sewing machine will will handle it. Although I might, I might not be able to handle it. It'll be some serious serious business there. So I think for now, I'm we're gonna come back and figure out what kind of signatures can go inside because I think that's gonna be the our best bet our uh, signatures. So let's find some papers. I've gathered together some of uh, some papers to use for signatures. And I think I am I'm pretty excited about how I'm going to use these in the journal. And is there some fun like coloring pages? And some Ideals magazines. This is some art magazine, uh, botanical, which has a nice plain spot on the back. Just a little book page, Ideals. There's another Ideals image. And then some forms, uh, vintage graph paper. I love this paper and these two pages. I think I'm going to glue these together like that and figure out how that'll get put in there. Little vintage bird illustration. This is from Mun Muncie's Magazine. So that's from uh, the 1890s, 1896, 97, around that range. So that's a really cool piece. Like a hymnal. Cool images from a book. This one. Fun. Little Victorian bits. Some uh, Sarah Mida illustrations. Very pretty. Very pretty. These are Helen Steiner Rice images. Some antique. This is from 1894. And so these are original uh, title pages. Thank you. More Sarah Mida. And I kind of grabbed ones with red. I thought if you are somebody who like that red cover, you're going to like a lot of red stuff inside too. So I've got a couple of these pages, some maps, more neutral, this fun two-sided paper. This is from a stamp collector's book. And so it's original it's from 1939, I think, 1940s around there. And some of them have a few stamps on them, so that might be fun. 
This is like parchment paper from the stamp book that comes in the front of it. And there's a bunch of them in there. You're supposed to be able to stick stamps to it. I think somebody did, but then remove them. There's like little, little bits. Maybe your favorites or something. I don't know. Some of the Sears and Roebuck reproduction book from the 70s and some quilts. Quilts. Those are rugs. Okay. Yeah. Oriental rugs. So yeah, I guess now it's just a matter of deciding how to put these together. So that's pretty exciting. I don't know. I should probably do these by like size or something. I don't know. I probably have way too many. That's generally how I do stuff. Uh, smaller, a little bit smaller, those, just bigger, and this book is really skinny, so I think I'm going to end up being, cutting these down quite a bit. Okay, that one's smaller. Just want to pull out the smaller ones, make sure they don't kind of get lost. There we go, all of those. There's that one, smaller. And then, of course, these, I'll just include the Muncie's in there. And that one, why not? Anything else? That one's kind of smaller. Okay. Okay, this is going to be fun. We're going to put all these together, random-like. Oh, and I wanted to show you, too. I did kind of get somewhere with this. So this will be the cover. The spine and then when you flip it over that here's that piece I did remove a big chunk of it as you can see and yeah so open it up and I'm noticing that this piece right here is superfluous superfluous <laughs> and I think I'm just gonna cut it out yeah like creates a lot of extra bulk in here and I'm gonna need that space for sewing in the signatures I need good access to it so here's another another little piece we could maybe make something um, into it perhaps maybe like a little uh, spine dangle or something or something something so we'll keep that and yeah so this is what we have so far so far so good okay so we'll put that aside and play with our signatures <laughs> 